fueled by Deathcast. Prandtl, um, in in the the early days, people understood had had this approximate idea of how wings worked, mm-hmm. but how they actually produced lift was a big mystery. And Prandtl was the one that came up with a way to explain that. Now, the way he explains it is a little, I don't want to say obtuse, but it's a little obscure and it's difficult to understand. Um, we, we Kids all learn about the Bernoulli effect, mm-hmm. that the flow over the top of the wing is faster and the flow under the wing is slower and the faster, the faster air is lower pressure. Mm-hmm. And so the, the wing is literally being sucked up and that's where the lift comes from. Prandtl explained how this happens. And if you look at it, if you take the uniform airflow, okay, mm-hmm. you say that's zero. And this is a mathematical mm-hmm. in concept. You take that as zero. You set everything to that. So your moving frame of reference. So now the flow is moving faster over the top and it's moving slower. That is, there's a negative component underneath. And Prandtl says, okay, if I now make this air go this way, then that creates the lift. And when he calculated that, he created the mathematical f- model for it. It exactly predicted how wings worked. And all of a sudden, all these things that the Wright brothers had discovered in 1903 in building the airplane, and they said, okay, if the wing is this shape and you, you do this with it, you can change the lift. But if you change the shape of the wing, then you had to test all over again. Mm-hmm. And this was the way things were done before Prandtl figured out this math model. And so with the math model, you could do it on a piece of paper and figure out the answer before you actually went to the wind tunnel and actually tested it. And this was, so Prandtl figures this out. And he writes this in a report in 1921. And then in 1933, he says, hey, that first report I wrote, here's an addition to that. And he just does this two-page, real simple, well, simple for him. And I was aware of this report, and I'm looking at birds and thinking about the way birds fly, and birds don't need vertical tails. Right. Right? And everything we build airplane-wise has a vertical tail in one one form or another. Even the B-2, it creates drag at the wingtips in order to create that yawing moment just just like a vertical tail would so um all the all the flying wings you've ever seen except for these very this very narrow class of of vehicles that come out of this idea that prandtl wrote this paper in 1933 about prandtl i believe did not realize what he had because he never he never made it to like an experiment or a physical. He thing, right? never did anything it was with just it. Just on paper. It just just a just a solution. And, oh, here it is. And um, it there were two other brothers that were building sailplanes that ended up doing something very similar. They actually crossed paths with Prandtl. I have these photographs, and photographs like that will screw you up every time, because it turns out that the two brothers, one of them goes on to get his PhD, mm-hmm. and um, and and associated with Prandtl in some way. But the two of them never actually talked. And they ended up doing very, very close to the same answer. And so this man ends up, after World War II, um, they build, the, these two brothers build gliders. They're Reimar Horton and Walter Horton. Mm-hmm. Reimar died in 1994. This was when I first became aware of this as a problem. And it wasn't because of Rymar, but I, I had never really been exposed to the gliders that they made until after he was gone. Walter was still alive. Walter was a, alive till 1998. I was able to interact very briefly with Walter. Uh, there was an email buddy of mine that knew Walter, and I would send him questions. He would go ask Walter, then I would get the answers back. Wow. And. Walter, there, there, there were pieces of it that Walter understood, other pieces he didn't. Um, the other brother, Reimar, was the one that got the PhD under, under Prandtl. But there, again, they, they never connected. And it turns out that 
Prandtl's solution was what we call a minimum drag solution. And this particular solution, there's a reason birds use this and why it works so well for them. It's that if you make any other solution except for this one, you end up either being heavier or you create more drag. You cannot, the, the very bottom of this bucket where these two things intersect, mm -hmm. it turns out is this Prandtl 1933 solution. Wow. That's why birds are there. Wow. They know this. I mean, uh, any other bird would have been filtered out natural selection right. by simply because of this. So the, this is the bottom of the bucket. This is the optimum spot. Mm -hmm. We've never built that airplane. Still to this okay. day. To, to this day, okay, there are only a handful of airplanes that have been built there. Right. And um, all those experiments until about uh, six months ago were, were mine. Um, since then, there have been a handful of others that have built airplanes that, that do this. Wow. And, and uh, um, part of it is because of this Prandtl 1933 solution. That's incredible. And I, I, was, um, I heard you talk uh, about this as well, and you were saying that when you were kind of figuring this out, you took, it took you 11 years. Yeah. To, to, to work this out. I'm slow. And well no, I mean like I mean you're working you're working back from, you know, a model that never was tested or, or right. existed. Right. So what struck me is you said that, you know, you got to your realization that this must be the solution, but you still didn't believe it. That's right. Is I, that I did not. Is that what is that like as a scientist? Like because you, you the, the romantic idea is a scientist is in his lab and he's working and he has the eureka moment, you know? Yeah. And it's yeah, like, yeah. I did it, you know, like the, the puff of smoke in the beaker and you yeah. did it, you know? But you're, you made this, you, you, you get there, you, you, you finish the, all of the, the, the calculations and you still don't believe it? Your brain doesn't allow you to think that? My brain did not allow, because everything I had been trained in, in all this aeronautical engineering up to this point was that's not a solution that'll work. 